Well, joining us now from Washington, D.C. to discuss this is Olivier Blanchard, Chief Economist at the International Monetary Fund. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, if I could begin by asking you about the risks of uh, the oil scarcity and indeed the rise in uh, commodity prices, what do you see as the kind of worst case scenario for this in terms of global growth? Look, uh, our baseline is based on uh, recognizing the fact that prices have gone up quite a bit already. Uh, and we, this has led us to revise the forecast down a bit, then other factors have led us to revise the forecast up, so there's not much change. But in general, the kind of oil price increases we've seen so far uh, should not derail uh, the recovery. Uh, things are very, very different from the 1970s, uh, so the fears that we have about the repeat of the 70s are probably not justified. Mm. Now, if something happened in the Middle East and the prices reached 150 or 200, then that would be a different ballgame. But under uh, our best guesses, which are actually the market best guesses, we think that this will have a relatively small impact. Uh, on world growth. Now, if there is a scarcity and concern over it, should OPEC be increasing production? Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, if you think, for example, that uh, Libya's production is going to be impaired for some time, uh, OPEC has more than enough capacity to offset it. Uh, so that should not be a big issue, and I think that they are committed to do it. Now, the speed at which they do it may be a bit slow, so it may take a few weeks, but in general, there is enough spare capacity, there are enough reserves in the world mm. that, again, under the current circumstances, uh, that should not be a major issue. Now, in this report, uh, the euro area growth has been upwardly revised slightly, while the UK growth has, has gone down a little bit. Why is that when we are still uh, in the sovereign debt crisis in Europe? And yet the UK does seem to have escaped the worst of it. Well, you know, there are many factors affecting this or that country. So in Europe, there has been a number of good news on the confidence front, and which explain why we've revised the forecast up. Although, you know, one should be realistic, and the growth rates that we uh, have for Europe are still uh, very mediocre. They reflect the fact that Europe, for a long time, has been going slowly. Uh, in the case of the UK, uh, the UK government has embarked on a very strong fiscal consolidation. Uh, this will do good things in the long run, but there is no question that this is going to slow down, uh, do, slow down demand in the short run. And so this is why our forecast is, uh, is, is, has been revised downwards a little bit. Uh, when just on the UK, uh, after the interest rate rise in Europe, uh, should the central bank, uh, should the Bank of England rather follow suit? No, I, I think, uh, again, here, to the extent that there is a very strong fiscal consolidation, I think the uh, monetary authority should do whatever it takes to maintain demand, and I think in this case keeping interest rates low is the right thing. Now, you have the issue that headline inflation has been consistently high uh, for quite a while. Uh, so far, it doesn't seem to have had a major impact on core inflation. Expectations seem to be well anchored, so I think that the UK is following the right uh, monetary policy. Now, in Portugal, we've seen significantly slow growth there, persistently over the last decade. How concerned are you that any kind of financial assistance plan is only going to make this worse rather than better? No, it's obviously going to make things better. Uh, in Portugal, like, uh, like Greece, uh, are countries where there has been very slow growth for a while, Portugal especially so. Uh, they have to implement structural reforms. Uh, which are tough to put in place, which take a long time to work out. They have to do fiscal consolidation, which is not easy to do. Uh, they are going to need financing, and uh, without the financing, they couldn't do it. And so the financing is going to be precious in allowing them to do so. But this is going to take a, a long, long time. But, you know, there's lower average income there, lower minimum wage. Does that mean that it has to be a significantly different package from the one in Greece and Ireland? No, I think the general principle is the same. They have lost some competitiveness. Uh, they have to regain it. We're actually seeing signs uh, that this is happening, not, not very quickly, but we see uh, negative uh, inflation, uh, in, in, in core inflation in both Portugal and in Greece. So these mechanisms are at work. You also have to increase productivity growth. You have to do all these things. It doesn't happen overnight. And therefore, that's why they are going to need financing for some time. Mm. So what kind of interest rates are... Uh, how, what kind of interest rate would they be pay, paying then on their debt? 
Well, I, I, I think we, we have to be realistic about how long it's going to take, uh, how much it's going to cost, how easy we're going to uh, make it for them, and there, to the extent that uh, we could, we and, and the FSF, uh, European Union, could do something at the interest margin, I think that's very much worth exploring. Uh, We'll see whether we can get there, but that would be a good thing if we can do it. Of course, the Irish are also asking to pay less interest. Um, how far, how likely do you think it is that you can reach a compromise on that? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part of your I'm question. I'm saying that the Irish are also trying to increase, uh, to, to lower the interest rate that they pay. Do you think that's likely? I, let me not make comments about this or that country, but in general, I think to the extent that uh, we can help them uh, maybe by decreasing the interest rate, that's mm -hmm. something that we should definitely explore, yes. Overall, what kind of a disadvantage is it that uh, these European countries are not able to devalue the way countries outside of the Eurozone would be able to with a similar IMF programme? Oh, it, it clearly makes it uh, diff more difficult. There is, there is no question that when you join uh, a common currency area such as the euro, there are benefits and there are costs. The benefits have been obvious, which is that during the crisis, I think if these countries had been on their own, they would have been in deep trouble uh, then, and it probably in more acute way than they are today. Uh, that's the benefits. You get all kinds of benefits from integration. But at the same time, when you need to do an adjustment, uh, a wage adjustment, an income adjustment, uh, it, it is harder to do. So it's going to take more years. Yes. Olivia Blanchard, thank you very much indeed for joining us.